What's up, good people? What's up, good people? It's your boy, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr., the Impact Builder. Y'all know what it is. It's another edition of the Author Showcase brought to you by, I don't know if y'all, know if y'all can see that with my backdrop on, the National Black Unity News newspaper. I don't know if y'all can see that. <laughs> I'll hold it back a little bit. You might be able to see it. But the National Black Unity News newspaper, um, it is a quarterly newspaper that gives you, brings you um, some of the most phenomenal um, editors, some of the most phenomenal stories. Um, just from all across the globe. For those that may not be familiar with the National Black Unity News, um, it's a newspaper out of Baltimore, Maryland, be more in the house. Um, and we, the newspaper goes all over the country, but also in the diaspora and then also into um, a couple of countries in Africa. So we are, are just really elated about what we do, how we do it, and how we're able to be uh, in the community, for the community, about the community, uh, in what we do and what we bring in the newspaper. Um, if you aren't subscribed to the newspaper, I'm going to need you to go after the interview. You can go to www.tnbun.com, and you can, um, you can actually subscribe to the newspaper. It's quarterly four issues. It can be delivered right to your door. Or if you want to have the digital, just the digital version, you can actually go right there online, subscribe, and you can uh, download the digital version there as well. Um, but it's a great, um, it's a great newspaper filled with just some, some really great topics, some really great, great stories by some uh, some of the most great writers uh, that you will ever find. Uh, and like I said, you're not gonna, you're gonna find in this newspaper stories that you aren't really gonna find in mainstream, um, mainstream media, mainstream newspaper. So that's what makes us unique. So we wanna welcome y'all to the National Black Unity News newspaper. And y'all know what I do, the author showcase. I don't know if y'all can see this too, but the current issue is out. So you can go and subscribe and you can also get the uh, physical newspaper sent, uh, mailed out to you as well. Like I said, uh, mailed to your door. Um, the author showcase this, uh, this, this issue, another issue with some phenomenal writers, some, some phenomenal authors, one that we're going to be bringing to you in just about a minute, less than a minute, I'm going to say, I'm going to allow her to be able to introduce herself, and we're going to have a conversation, um, not just about her book, but also all of the other great things that she's involved in, being a, um, be, being a creative uh, writer, author, poet, all of those other great things uh, that we want to be able to learn about her so that you can learn about her and be able to um, get some insight uh, into who she is, kind of how she got into this writing journey that she's on, all of those great things. So we want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, and I'm going to jump right in. Uh, like I said, I'm going to I'm going to introduce her name and introduce her for a second, but then I'm going to let her introduce herself to you all and then we're going to jump into our conversation and this is um joining us this evening is miss catrice uh, forgive me i don't know i don't know i want i don't want to mess up the name because i know it's catrice simpson um but i know there's another part of that so i don't know if because i've seen it different ways so you tell me mm -hmm. how i should <laughs> say it on there though <laughs> it's okay it's catrice simpson diggs d-i-g-g-s -G -G okay. diggs yeah <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure because I saw because I saw it a couple of places, and I wanted it's to make okay. sure that I had the full yeah that I had the the full name on and everything yeah. like that. So I want to welcome you to the author showcase. Thank you for Thank joining you. us uh, this evening. We appreciate you taking time out of your your busy schedule to be able to join us and be able to have this conversation um, as That's we do on the author showcase. So. Absolutely. I thank you for having me as well. Um, my name is Katrice Simpson Diggs, and I am an author. I am a poet. I am an artist. I am a preschool teacher. I am a women's program director for a nonprofit organization. I am a mother. I am a lover. I am a friend. Um, I began writing uh, at a pretty young age, and um, it was with a, a poetry contest actually when I was in the sixth grade. Um, and it's just, it's always been something that's natural for me. I didn't realize it 
until I got a little bit older, but I did start at a young age with my writing. Wow. Now, now, now I want to talk about the poetry because you mentioned that. Now, what, what got you interested in poetry? Was it something that you heard or was it something that you just kind of kind of fell into as far as writing poetry and everything, especially at, at such a young age? Um, my family is very musically inclined. My uncles had a group um, and we just always had music around us. Um, so when I entered the poetry contest, it just came so easily, easy and fast. Mm. And I won. So I really do believe that it has a lot to do with the music in my life um, okay. and the different TV shows that were coming out at the time as far as uh, like in Living Color and things like that, as far as what was going on around me, um, mm -hmm. along with the music in my family. I think that's what really got it started. Um, and then once it started, it was like, okay, this is a part of you, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I love that, that you got, that you got started at such a, a young age with it. Um, and, and I've always said this, that, that poetry is nothing more than, than word, uh, or music is nothing more than poetry put to music. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. when when you when you listen to um, a, a lot of a lot of the hip hop and, and a lot of the the um, some of the artists, the the poetry or the the sound, if, if you take just the words, yep, <laughs> and, and, and you listen to them, it's nothing but poetry. I mean, when and especially when I think of artists like Jill Scott, because she does, she's a poet as well. But I think of of artists like Jill Scott. I think of Tupac, um, you know, and and some others. Um, I'm trying to think of who else um, off the top of my head, but most of the most of the hip hop artists and some R and B artists, if you listen to their music and you take the the song, take the words that they've written for the song, and you read them and you listen to them, they have a flow, they oh, have a poetic, just a, yeah. a energy to them and everything like that. So I, I like that, and I like that you that you that you got that, and that was a reflection of what you were going through. Um, I started because I'm a poet as well, and I didn't start. I didn't start writing nowhere near as early as you. I started writing in college, and and I was writing just to get some things out of my head, mm -hmm. and it was things that I saw, things that I had experienced, and then some things that that you know that I felt like I wanted to speak on, you know, that I wanted to speak about that would give me some kind of way my, my voice and everything like that, and and it came out as poetry. You know, mm -hmm. it came out in the form of poetry and everything like that. And and I have always have fallen in love with it. You know, like you, I just, I fell in love with it. It's been a part of me and been a part of what, what I do. So I appreciate that, that you, that you started at a, at a, at a young age with it. Because it's, <laughs> I always say poetry is like jazz. You got, everybody doesn't get it. Everybody exactly. doesn't get it. <laughs> and it's, a, it's, an acquired, it's an acquired taste yeah just like just like jazz is um so i appreciate you um talking about that and that love um for poetry now did the poetry lead you into into writing is that how you got into writing was was with the poetry um at, at first um yeah pretty much absolutely it's 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 the story is kind of similar to yours the poetry was something that I would do as needed. I did the poetry contest to win the contest because I wanted to go to a uh, space camp. I, remember, I think I told you guys that before. And then after that, it's like when different things would come up, I would be asked to write and speak, um, whether it be in school, um, as far as plays, once upon a time when we still had plays in school, um, whether it be school plays or just speaking engagements in general, as far as school things go. I was also a member of the 4 H Club I was also involved in a lot of things in town. Um, and it just, it's always been easy for me to speak. And once I started writing the poetry, it kind of mm. connected. And then having, I mean, it's really important to me. I feel like it's really important for children to have music in their lives because it hits on so many different things, you know? Mm. Um, and I always say apply math and science. So even with my poetry, I apply math and science. Like a lot of the time when I write poetry, like you said, it's an acquired thing it goes pretty deep and some people don't understand it, but it's an acquired thing. Um, so the poetry did start me with the writing. Once I got into high school though, it was more like you were in college, experiencing things and being able to express that on paper and yeah. it flowing in a totally different way on a totally <laughs> different level. And um, it actually being able to be used to share with others and speak to people and still continue to do the same thing as far as speaking in high school and things like that. So yeah, it turned, it started as, just poetry, just for fun. 
but over time mm. it became one of my purposes, you know, um, mm. as far as it leading me into writing. I just, I just love, I love words. <laughs> <laughs> as, now, now, let, let me ask you this. Um, is there, or ha, what's been the difference between Catrice, the younger poet writer and the Catrice now? Uh, the Catrice, the younger writer, was writing for fun and as needed. I was writing not due to me knowing it was my purpose. I was writing because it was something that was asked or required me, for me to do. As okay. I got older, I realized that it's been required for me to do it, and I've been asked to do it for a reason. And like over my years, even since like as I was younger and growing up, I, I was it was easier for me as a child to understand and accept my purposes really, mm. really early on. Um, okay. So it wasn't that hard for me to recognize the difference, but that is the difference. When I was younger, I was doing it as needed. And as I got older, mm. I'm doing it because it's needed. You know, it's kind of like a requirement. It's, it's like mm. if you're able to do it, do it. And I'm able to do it. So I got to do it because like. It's like, okay, mm. God's saying to me, I gave you this gift, what you gonna do with it? So it's like, I, I, I have to, I know that I have to. And it, yeah. it, it works and it helps a lot of people, you know? And I, and I love that, I love that. And, and I'm the same way, I, it's like, I, I've got to write. And <laughs> when, 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 if I don't, this, when something hits me, it will literally, I, it will literally be like, okay, I gotta write. I gotta write mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. I've gotta, I gotta put it on paper because it's something that, that, that that I feel that I'm feeling that should that I should speak on and everything like that. So I love that. Don't you now, feel amazing once you do? Once you write it down, it's like, oh, it feels so much better. <laughs> let, let, let me tell you, I literally had one night, I had uh -huh. this dream. I had this dream and it's it's um it, it was about this this young lady singing a praise and worship song on the stage of my church, right? She's singing this, she's singing this song and the song was a poem. So you know how you, you know, you wake up sometimes, you, you know, you, you have the pen and paper beside you, because I know I do. I keep it where I can, where I can reach it. Write and write. down those dreams. <laughs> but, but this particular night, I didn't do that. I was just like, oh, I'm going to go back to sleep. Patrice, I could not go back to sleep. It would not, the poem literally would not let me go back to sleep until mm -hmm. I got up and, ha and wrote it. Mm -hmm. And I, I sat up and wrote it that night. And then, yeah. like you said, it was like, all right. Now, yes, now he, yes. My body yes, was the, like, okay, now you can go back to sleep. Exactly. You know? The worst is when the worst is when you hear, I, 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 when I dream, I dream a lot of melodies. I dream mm -hmm. a lot of melodies. Okay. I dream a lot of songs. I dream a lot of words. The worst mm -hmm. is when you wake up and you can't remember it because they're so mm. awesome when you're asleep. And it's like, when you wake up, it's like, nah, that wasn't it. So I totally understand what you're talking about. Like, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, it, it's just, it, it, like I said, like, we, like we've like we said, everybody, you, 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 everybody not going to get this. Exactly. Because, <laughs> you, that's okay, you know? Yeah, that's exactly, okay. exactly. <laughs> authors, you know, those that are authors understand what we're talking about, those two, mm -hmm. three, four o'clock a.m. wake up calls that you get. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you, you get those wake up calls and it's like hey I, i've got to get this out because if I, if I don't write it one like you said i might forget it mm -hmm. <laughs> and i and i don't want to forget it so i want to jot something down that's going to jog my memory about what it was that i that i dreamt about or what i was thinking about or what my mind was thinking about so that i can yeah. come back to it yeah. once i you know once you wake back up and everything like that so i love i love that what's what's um one word that you would use to describe your writing style with, with everything that you've done, with what's one word that you could that you would use to encapsulate uh, your writing style? Um, one word. I would say weird. Weird? Okay. Okay. I would say, I would say weird. And this is a lesson that was taught to me two days ago by one of my clients at the shelter. Um, Cause we were, I was, you know, I asked them the same kind of questions as far as like, how do you feel about yourself? How do you define yourself? What will people say about you? And, you know, they asked me the same thing. And when you look it up as a noun, it's a person's destiny. You know, um, a lot of what I write is 
based on my experiences, mm -hmm. um, what has come from those experiences or other people's experiences and what has come from those experiences and where I know they could possibly take you, whether it be good or bad. Do I completely speak in a negative when it's bad? No, but I do lead in my writing you towards what could possibly happen if it's not a good thing or mm -hmm. not a thing that is the best choice. Um, so I would say weird, I would say like weird and love, you know, because like I said, weird, when I found out this other definition, as far as a person's destiny, weird is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, a lot of times we're often taught that these words that we think are so, and can be so damaging, aren't mm -hmm. really damaging, you know, they're the total opposite. So when I saw that, I accepted it. I was like, okay, I'll be weird. I always say that anyway. So I'm definitely going to accept it now. Um, but aside from weird, I would just say love. You know, mm -hmm. I would say love, grace, peace. I know that's more than one word, but it all encompasses mm -hmm. to one thing. Um, maybe oneness, you know, because um, it's always leading back to one for the most part. I always try to lead back anything that I write about to one. I will speak okay. and voice my opinions on both sides because I am that great person. I am that great person. I know what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong, but I'm always able to see the in-between that, that causes a lot of issues in my life. But I'm always to see both sides and both perspectives or all perspectives, you know? Um, so maybe peace, maybe oneness, but it's all still leading back to that, that same thing. I love that, I love maybe that. Maybe there is no word. Maybe I need to make one up. <laughs> mm. Now see, that's the creative energy that I get from you because you you don't seem like someone that colors inside the lines, if that makes sense to anybody, or <laughs> is going to allow anyone to put uh, Catrice in a box. It's like, mm -hmm. no, I, I can't, I mm -hmm. can't fit in a box. It's not, you're not going to be able to, to define me in that kind mm -hmm. of way, because if you, a think, bit. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you think this about me, I'm going to do that with, with me. <laughs> Just because, just because. I'm mad you just split called me out, but it's okay. <laughs> I love that. I love because that's exactly how I am. You thought you yeah. knew until you didn't. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> but but I but I, I I love that and and I love that about us because yeah that that's that's what makes us innovative. That's what makes us creative. That's what that's what gets us, you know, to to um to those levels that people, you know, don't quite get. And I, and I use, always use this example. I always say that Steve Jobs was one of the most creative, one of the most brilliant minds of the 20th and 21st century. Mm -hmm. And I say that because he, he solved a problem that we did not know we even had. Yeah. He was so innovative. So he wasn't going to allow what he saw, you know, technology and what it did to be able to put him and frame him in this way. He's like, no, I want, I want this. You know, who would have thought that that these devices that we use, you know, um, called phones, would give us the ability and the and the uh, capacity to be able to do pretty much anything we need to do. Everything from, we need. Every from a working standpoint. Everything. And and I always remember uh, while well, I watched the movie Jobs with um, Ashton Kircher, and one uh -huh. of the things that Steve Jobs said was he wanted the Apple computer to be like a household appliance, like your refrigerator, like your toast. He wanted it to be in everybody's household. Who what? goes around? Yeah, he he and literally. <laughs> that's that's what that's where his mind was mm -hmm. when he, when he was thinking about. His, his when he was thinking about this computer that he was building, he said, mm -hmm. "I don't just want to build a computer. I wanted to have the ability to be able to one be in everybody's home, you know." I said, "But then two, he wanted it to be in such a way or leave such a mark on people that we will be able to do things that we that nobody had even thought about thought doing, of, yep. or cared about that? doing, or cared <laughs> about doing." You're right. Yeah. The person has gifts with their purpose. That's who does yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And so when when you think of, you know, when you think of Catrice and the things that you do, yeah, you you take the limits off. 
mm-hmm. of, of, of the creativity and, and being able to say, you know what? Yeah, if if this is who this is who I am and I'm I'm ever and we're ever evolving, then we we take those instances and we take the things that we do creatively as authors, as writers, and say, you know what, yeah, I, I can I can do this. Who said who said I can't? And it gives people exactly. a new way of thinking, gives people a new way of thinking about something, you know, that that type of thing. So um, so a great, a great, I love that. So it can be more than more than one word. It can be exactly who, who, who do you believe that you are. So, you know, that that's what I love about it. Now, take that. I want to take that and and we're gonna get into the name of the book a little later because we're gonna talk about that. But I want you to what made you want to write the 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 book to um to climb and crown the walls? What made you want to write that book? What when was the idea that hey, I gotta put this. The, these words together, this manuscript together to create this this book? Okay, so I found out that my husband was having an affair. And okay. I've known my husband for almost, tw- maybe over 20 years. And I met him in 2001. So yeah, almost, okay. almost 23, 24 years. We were mm-hmm. best friends at first. So we knew everything about each other, decided to get married, had a fairy tale marriage, or so it seemed. You know, every marriage Mm. has its issues. Um, I found out he was having an affair and it took me out. You know, it took me, it took me out to the point where Patrice, the lover of life, couldn't get, I I couldn't get out the bed. You know, I couldn't get Mm. out the bed. I didn't want to do anything. Um, I just wasn't available the way that I needed to be available. And I, I I felt like I was losing myself. Now, Tammy was my neighbor at the time. And prior to this happening, Tammy said, you know, we were, we would talk in the hallways when we see each other. And she said, you know, you should write a book. And I was like, I was supposed to write a book almost 20 years ago, Tammy, I do need to write a book. So long story short, I guess you can say not writing the book in the beginning is what made me write the book eventually. Yet okay. the experiences that I encountered since I wanted to write the book, let's say 10, 15 years ago, they wouldn't have been included. You know, the purpose of my book wouldn't even be the same if mm-hmm. I had written what I wanted to write when Facebook okay. first came out. That's when I wanted to write a book. I wanted to write a oh. book when Facebook first came out because every day my sister was like, go on Facebook, go on Facebook. I'm like, okay. So I go on Facebook and I'm just like, this is boring. What are people, what is this? Why are people just throwing stuff on here? Don't make no sense. So I started mm-hmm. putting like quotes up. I would like uh, put scripture up. I started writing like small poems in the morning to be um, inspiring to people because it would give something to people something to feed off of in the morning rather than they cussed out somebody yesterday and just like it was too much foolishness going on so that's that's when I first decided okay write a book because a lot of people say you should write a book I'm like I'm working on it. I'm working on it and even if you go through my Facebook feed a lot of times when I post I'll post something but it'll be like a little poem in there or a little quote in there that I just throw in because that's how I started off on Facebook so over time once all of that stuff happened um, one day I just got up, you know, cause it got to the point where I didn't want to live. And I'm just like, you got too much to live, but I not want to live. And who you think mm-hmm. you are? Like, you need to get it together. You know, better. You don't even have the right to feel the way that you feel tighten up because if you don't mm-hmm. tighten up, God's going to show you how to tighten up the way you're not ready for it. So I got up and I said to Tammy, I think I texted her or called her. So I'm ready to write the book. And, um, I start, I started writing the book. Now, the book that I wanted to write was always going to include the poetry, the art, you know, all of those things. But okay. this time there was so much gut to add to it because I've had bad experiences in my past. And those are the things that I wanted to tap into. And mm. the purpose of my book was even with all those bad experiences and never think that I would have to experience anything bad again, especially with your husband, you know, I had to. And when I felt what I felt, it's like all of that stuff from the past just came into that one bundle of that one moment. Um, mm. And I was like, okay, you can't just, you can't just hold this. Like I can literally feel the burning in my stomach each night because I couldn't sleep, you know? It's like, okay, why are you feeling this way? Why are you feeling this way? Do something about it, write the book. So I called Tim and I said, I'm ready. And I started writing the book. Now, now let me ask you this. Once you, once you started writing, what is that, that journey of, of completing that book been like for you? From, from when you first started writing it to when you when you got 
I want you to describe for me, if you can, the um, the moment you received the book in your hand and you were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so when I first started writing it, it was no big deal to me. You want to know why? Because I'm a mm. writer and I'm just mm -hmm. at the computer in my book the way I'm always the way I always am. So it was no big deal for me. I'm just doing what I do. Okay. Then I got writer's block. I got writer's mm. block when I had to kind of go in detail, not too much detail, but speak or write on what happened and how I was feeling when I found out about the affair. Okay. And okay. that stopped me for a little while. That stopped me for about two months. And that's when Tammy was like, get to it. I know you're going through things. Let's pray. Get Finish the book. You can do it. Once I finished the book and got the book in my hand, I'm looking at it. I'm touching it. And I was like, <laughs> This is, this is my book. I wrote a book and it's gonna be here till the end of time. Yeah. yeah. Even if it helps one person or two people while I'm here, it's gonna help so many more people. So it doesn't really matter because what's in this book is not just the stories of pain and the stories of sorrow, but it is how I overcame all of those things with and, and just always making sure I cover everyone's race. And, um, making sure I have grace with myself as well. And just making sure that uh, it's speaking about being hurt, but also being forgiving and always, always, always applying love to everything that you do. I know it's hard, no matter how hard it is, apply love, forgiveness and grace to everything that you do. And um, once, I, once I grasp that concept and I grasp that book, cause it's so soft, um, that was it for me. Like, I want to say a couple of days after I was like, mm, I don't feel it yet. Mm, I don't know. But it's like, and even now I still have those moments where it's like, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. It may not be a big deal to many, but it's a big deal to many, if that makes any sense. So um, yeah. I feel really, really good about it because when I get the feedback and when I see the reviews, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to be personable. I wanted it to be... Uh, intimate I wanted it to seem like I was sitting right there next to you sharing this story and I wanted you to get whatever you get out of it not just what I say as far as have grace have love whatever you can get out of it get that out of it there is no agenda except for to accept it for what it is because you got to accept everything for what it is including yourself um so I feel really really good about the book and the book is really soft so <laughs> I love the cover and everything so it's like once I touched it I'm like yeah this is perfect. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. Mm. Extra pages, mm. pictures, poems, everything. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that um, you know that I love about us authors and what I what I tell authors and and everything. I said our our books will outlive us. I said, yes, as and I'm, long as after we gone. And it's it's like um you know at first I felt like the book's not really selling too well but like I didn't have any expectations did you set any goals did you set any expectations for how you wanted it to sell no because I don't do stuff like that you know so mm -hmm. it's going to sell the way it's supposed to sell how it's supposed to sell where it's supposed to sell and it's going to be here forever forever and even whatever somebody gets from that they're going to be able to share that in some way shape or form they might not even be aware of forever it's like it's we're, we're always going to be here we're always going to be here always yeah, and that that's what I, I love about you know I love about books is is they are they are forever. I mean, what as you think about it, you think about the the number of books that are in the libraries, the number of books that are in bookstores. These are some some of these they're they're books that we can find that have been around for ages, for yes. years, that, and years, and and <clears throat> and, and and our books had, are, are going to do the or do the same thing. Same thing we put out there so that I think that that is um that's a great that's a great way of looking uh looking at it and I know you mentioned a little bit about the the book but I want you to tell the audience just the, what the book is about give them a a, a a back back cover version of what the book of the book is about like somebody comes in the bookstore you know how they the first place they go is to the back of the book they, they want to read what it is they want to read in the little synopsis don't have me I'm about to read the back of the book Okay. okay. So, <laughs> I mean, the book, the book is pretty much, the book is pretty much a memoir. 
It's about my life's experiences. It's about how I was able to use all of my talents that I acquired as a child, even to this day. Everything that I did as a child, I still do right now. Um, it's about understanding communication. It's about having faith. It's about always showing love. It's about being there. It's about being present. Um, it's about overcoming obstacles, journeys. It's it's a life book. You know, there's a lot in those little bit of pages because most people will never experience one page of what I've experienced, you know, as far as my whole life and or their whole life. They probably won't go through any of that. Um, so there's a lot in there. It covers everything, but it's generally a book about overcoming, continue to have faith, knowing that God's going to send you these obstacles, but you can jump over them, you can climb the walls and um, just embrace everything that you go through and use it, use it to help the next person, whether it be good or bad, you know, use what God has given you to help the next person. It's imperative that we do that as a people. Like we, yeah. we really need to, we should, I don't wanna say we need to, we should as a human race, do our best to shift perspective to make the world a better place. Cause it's easy, like I say all the time, if you could tap on that phone to go to one of these social media sites, you can tap on that phone to spread the word. Absolutely. And and, and it won't cost you nothing. You nothing know? at all. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't cost you nothing at all to, to do to, to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I love, I love that. I love that. What what do you want the the reader to come away with after they've read your book? If they've they've read that last page, they've read that last word, what do you want them to come away from? Uh, from the book, knowing, doing, or um, learning? I want them to know that nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. I want them to do the best that they can at all times. That's one of my quotes, be your best self. And another quote is yourself at best is the best self to be. You know, mm -hmm. you can be, you can be uh, digging holes for an occupation, you could be hanging bars for an occupation, no matter what it is you're doing, even if you're making the wrong choices, just be your best self so that you're not going too far away from what you're supposed to be doing because um, nobody's perfect. And what I want them to get from it as far as as they walk away is to not pass judgment on mm -hmm. anyone. Um, I'm so big on that. Tammy makes fun of me because I'm so big on that as far as the word judgment and what judgment does, because even asking questions when you are not permitted to in conversation is passing judgment. So it's like, don't judge anyone. You do not know what's going on in someone's head. You do not know what's going on in someone's house. You do not know what's going on in someone's heart. Mm. And sometimes we don't even know what's going on with ourselves. That's why I say you don't even have the right to judge yourself. So how dare you judge someone else? Who are you? That's my, that's like my big question. Who are you? You can't do that. Like, how dare you? Um, so that's, that really, that's, that's what I really want people to get from it as they close that last page, just have grace and don't pass judgment, you know, because you never know if a, a, a smile or even you picking a piece of paper up that someone else dropped will make a person's day, even if they are a bum on the streets or someone that is less without on the streets because I work with the homeless I don't really want to say bum but mm, you just never mm. know you know yeah. you just never know you never know who could save your life the next day just don't yeah. pass judgment and honor thy neighbor and that doesn't mean the person living next to you that means the person that is standing next to you across from you all around you just just love each other yeah. why not yeah. absolutely <laughs> absolutely and, and I love that you do that and we'll talk a little bit about you working with the um with the you know with the homeless uh, shelter mm -hmm. and the homeless people in, in a second but um one of the things that I learned because I have a couple of business associates that have they actually um it's the second Saturday I don't know if they're still doing it or not but the second Saturday usually of each month um we have a place here where mm -hmm um where they feed the homeless and and everything like that and so I've gone down and had conversations with them and to just hear some of the stories I mean it'll blow you away <laughs> it blow it blow you away because you know you come to realization wow that that could be me at any time absolutely <laughs> at, at at any time 
And, and I'm just like, man, and, and all they want to do, like you were saying, just be respected. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all they want. So I, I really appreciate you, you saying that and, and talking about that. Um, what does the title um, to climb and crown the wall mean to you? And then I'm got a part two to that as well. <laughs> okay, what does so that title mean to you? That title to me means to not allow any wall that is put in front of you to stop you from doing anything that you want to do because mm. you don't have to let it stop you. Walls are there as barriers. Walls are there to prevent you from getting inside of other things. Um, I mean, you could choose to stop if you want to, but you don't have to. And what I did with, as far as why I titled the book that and what it means to me, I took the concept of every experience as a brick, you know, and I've never let anything stop me. Those bricks that came at me, at my head, I never let them stop me. I just stack them up. All right, thank you, God. All right, thank you for that one. Coming from the left, coming from the right, coming from everywhere. So what I did was instead of allowing it to stop me, I just, I mean, my wall is still building. It's still building. It's gonna build until I'm no longer here. It's gonna be building, I'm gonna take that back. It's going to continue to build until the end of time because my experiences and the way that I'm able to help others will just allow that wall to keep going. Climb the wall. I climbed the wall instead of allowing it to stop me. I became a part of that wall. I embraced every experience that I went through and I embedded those experiences inside of me so that I'm able to be a vessel for those who aren't able to speak on it or don't know what to do with it. So to climb and, cl to climb and crown the walls is a statement in regards to you not having to stop or let anything stop you. Embrace what comes towards you be prepared to not be prepared. And once you, ex once you accept and receive those things that you weren't prepared for, use them. It is 2023, use them with that click of a button to help the next person or to become a better person or to be an outreach or to become something that you never thought that you would become even though you've been doing it since you were a child. Um, there's so many things in it. Every brick can tell a different story. And um, I just embrace everything that I go through, even the bad, you know? I have my moments where it's like, oh, this sucks, or I'm crying my heart out, or I'm having a bad day. But once I go through those feelings and those emotions, I take it all in and I apply it to what I need to do next so that I don't have to experience that same emotion again, you know? Embrace it, take it in, use it. You took it in, give it back out, but give it back out in a way that's gonna be beneficial for someone. Wow. Now, <laughs> now here's the second part of that. All right. How did you how did you come up with the title? Where does where does that title come from? <laughs> it's poetic. So I honestly <laughs> don't know. I'm, okay, I'm gonna take that back. So the picture, that picture of me okay. on the book was just a picture of me. I think I was waiting for my husband to get off work one night and I just took a selfie. And I never take selfies. Okay. I actually I've only recently started taking selfies as far as embracing myself in a different way. It's something that I would never do. So I took that selfie, and this is before I found out everything that was going on. I took that selfie and I love the picture. And then I okay. found like this fun filter. This picture on the book, I want it to be on the side of a building. I wanted this mm. picture to be on the side of a building. So okay. I had it saved for maybe about a year. And I said, I want this picture. This I said, my picture is going to be on the side of a building, but I was going more towards my art, you know, as far as right, the art right. side of me. And then when I, um, Tammy, one day, Tam, I mean, I'm doing, the, I'm going through the blueprint Tammy gave me, and she was like, send me the title and the cover of your book. And I'm like, wait, what? As a writer, you usually don't title your stuff until, or a poet, I'm not going to say writer. As a mm -hmm. poet, you write the poem and then you give it its title based off of the guts of it, you know, based off mm -hmm. of where it took you. So when she asked me, I'm like, I'm having a Tammy moment. We all had them Tammy moments. I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I know she's going to want this. I don't know what to do. And I was like, you got this. So I went back to that picture. And I said, I think I even posted it on Facebook. I said, if it's not on the side of a building, I'll take it on, I'll take it on the cover of my book. And then I sent it to her and I looked at it and I was like, okay, what you going to title it? What is it looking like to you? You know, my business is called Spoken Insight because when I speak, I want you to be able to 
see mentally what I'm talking about. And when mm-hmm. I paint, I want you to be able to verbalize what it is you see. So that's why it's called spoken insight. So it's like, I'm just good with words. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I saw the picture as an artist, that's what came to me. As a poet, that's what came to me. And as a writer, that's what came to me. And I applied the math and science. <laughs> See this, this, this. See these. Are, this is this is why I do what I do, Patrice, because I love having these kinds of conversations. Mm-hmm. Because I get to learn. I get to learn so much. I've learned so much from from each of you all that have come on to the author showcase, and and to hear everybody's um, version of that question, how <laughs> they how they've come up with the title, what the title means to them. I mean, and I love the fact that and, and the, the, the cover fits perfectly into everything that you that you've said. And 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 believe it or not, it even it even I don't even know I can say this, it describes you. If you look at that picture yes. and you look at that cover. That's you. That's if, if you were if you were to say that that was worth you know how they say um what what is it a picture's worth a thousand words yes that picture speaks and that cover speaks so much about who you are so me and and everything so, so <laughs> I, I I love that I I love that that you said um I, I want you to talk about if you can and if you don't have these and then just let me know but what would you say. Um, to someone who who was trying to climb the wall, you know, and and do what they do. What are three steps to preparing for climbing and crowning their wall? Because everybody's wall is going to be a little different. But what would you say? How can they prepare for that? Prepare themselves for that? Um, I want to say actually the same thing that I just said. Be prepared for what you're not prepared for, and understand and respect that you don't have control over what you think you have control over. Mm -hmm. Um, Accept that, number one. I think that's number one. Accept that you need to be prepared for what you're not gonna be prepared for Mm. and that you have no control over what that is. Number one, sorry y'all, no control. (laughs) Number two, embrace, accept, and respect what has already happened because you can't do nothing about it. Embrace, accept, and respect what has already happened because you can't do anything about it. It's there. I'm not gonna say it's done, but it's there. What are you gonna do with it? And I would say the third thing is figure out what you're gonna do with it. <laughs> like, okay. I love that. God, God has given you these things. And like I said, it doesn't have to be anything bad, you know, because sometimes we get a promotion if we don't know what to do. Sometimes we uh, win a lottery if we don't know what to do. Figure it out. You have the tools. God is there. The universe is there. People all over the world are there with all these different ways and tricks on how to get things done. Like you said, YouTube, Google, everything. Um, mm-hmm figure it out, you know, cause you're able, you know, you are able. And that's the main thing. You know, you have people walking around with no arms, no legs, but they're still doing everything they have to do. And you have these things. You are capable of doing more than a lot of people are capable of doing. You have what you need because if you didn't have what you need, you wouldn't be here. And if you have what you need and you are here, do something. So that would be the third thing figure out what you're going to do with it. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be a journey. Like even in my book, I have a painting that I made and it's literally, it's literally called, the painting is called Blueprint, but the poem that goes along with it is called Journey. And it's a blueprint of a town I made up, but each street is like stability, pain, love, sorrow. It's called like Spoken Insight Lane as far as the main street. Um, but the, the poem after that is just like, let you know, like you, there's, there's, there's a place for you, regardless of where you are in life, there is a place for you at all times. And even if you don't know what that is, eventually you will see what it was, even when you didn't know what it was, who would have thought that everything that I did as a child 
I would still be doing now, but applying it in so many different ways, but the same concepts, you know, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> Yeah, man. Whoo! This, this writing journey that you know that 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 you're on. Um, what's what's been? If you could say that there's been, you know, uh, the the one thing that was difficult about the writing journey. What would you What would you say? It has uh, been the one thing that was difficult was having to speak on it. You know, it's different when you're talking to people about the different things that has happened in the book or the different things that have happened over the past couple of years um, okay. as far as like a friend or a parent or anything like that the hardest part was speaking on it out loud and mm. kind of like releasing it and at the same time okay. it was like the hardest thing it was like the best thing because I didn't even mm. realize at the time that I was still holding on to things whether I put it on paper or not when I mm. spoke on it it was triggering and it was just like thought it was okay trees thought you was okay. You tricked me. But it was like, all right, I did the same thing. Added that brick to that wall, climbed a little bit higher, and now I'm here, you know? But that was the hardest part. It wasn't um, it wasn't writing it. It wasn't anything that I experienced during that time. It was getting to that point where it's like, this is real. You know, even the things in my past I had never spoken on in public, you know? So it was like, okay, you spoke on it. This is real. This, this, is, this is real. You really are about to help people. This is you did this, you did this for a reason. If it wasn't supposed to happen, it wouldn't happen. It has happened. Get over yourself and figure out what you can do. I had to follow my own rules. Figure it out. <laughs> figure out what you're going to do with it. And I, I love that. I love that. Um, but, and this will, that'll kind of lead me into the, the, the next question was, what impact has your book had on people? Um, that have read it for your, your readers that have read it would have what has been the responses that you've gotten from those you know in in your you know your book signings or even the feedback that you've gotten through your through your social media and everything like that that people have read it what what has been their feedback to you about it it's been a breath of fresh air and I say mm -hmm. that because um like I said everything that people are getting from it and there's so many different perspectives and things that they're getting from it is exactly what I wanted them to get from it, which is whatever you okay. can get from it, you know? So it's mainly um, admiring my strength, which to God be the glory, you know, I don't want to take credit for that. I was given that from a higher source. That's not all me. I had to do my part. Um, and uh, not being aware, asking me how I'm still here and I'm still like the way that I am, because you would never know. That's what they. That's what most people say. You would never know that you went through what you went through with your personality and how you are. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I hear you, but it's me, so I don't really get it. All I can do is accept it and appreciate it and acknowledge it. You know. And sometimes it helps as far as my self affirmations. Like, you are strong. Because even though people tell me I'm strong. I have moments, you know, we're human. We all have moments where it's like, I don't feel like I'm strong. I don't feel like I'm worthy. I don't feel like I'm being a good mom. I don't feel like I was a good wife, but that's not the case. It wasn't you. You did what you were supposed to do, even if it wasn't good for the other person or bad for the other person. Even if somebody did something wrong to you in your childhood or whether it be good or bad, it doesn't matter the situation. It's been the admiration for the strength and the acknowledgement that it's, God given, you know, mm. um, and accepting that I'm the I'm I'm the best when it comes to those things, um, and having faith in me to come to me when it comes to the questions or concerns that they may have, you know, even my mom and my godparents are just like, we never knew, and I'm like, well, you weren't supposed mm. to. <laughs> that was the plan, but um, that may not always be a good thing as far as masking it. At the mm. same time, mm -hmm. I'm okay, you know, I'm okay. Even once my mom, I told, I let my mom read the book before I published it because I hadn't told my mom anything about what had happened okay. in the book. Um, mm -hmm. So I let her read it before I published it. And she's oh, just okay. like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. And I'm like, don't you dare apologize for something you're not responsible for. You don't, don't you do that. You didn't mm -hmm. do it. I was, you were there. You were there. It was me that, you know, withheld the information and I had my reasons for doing so. This don't have nothing to do with you. I love you though, but don't you dare put that on yourself. You know, mm -hmm. so um, 
it's just been the grace from those people, the acceptance and the acknowledgement that, you know, God is good. And with my stories and everything that's in the book, then being able to see that from a human perspective, you know, as far as even if they didn't believe, they kind of believe now, or even if they were unsure, they're kind of sure now, you know, things like that. Yeah, and, and and I also say this too, um, and this has to do with other authors that I know, and, and even clients that I've had that tell that that are telling their story. They're writing the book about their life and everything like that. You you actually have given given um, someone else the freedom to to live through their life, because mm-hmm. in them in them reading what you went through and and realizing, because this is one thing that they've all said to me, that a lot of people have come to them and felt it and said to them that they thought that they were the only one. Yes. Going yeah. through it. Yes. And, and, and so you give other people who may think that they're the only ones out there going through that. Hey, there's somebody else, one that, that, that has gone through what I'm going through, who has persevered. Mm-hmm. through what 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 I what I'm going through right now and getting to what what my mom called the other side of through yeah and, and <laughs> being able to get through it and and your words in your book give them the ability to be able to get to that other side mm-hmm. and be able mm-hmm. to do that so so yeah so that that's that's wonderful and and I know that um you know, hopefully you feel good when when someone tells you or sends you a note, sends you a message or whatever, or you hear them in conversations. Thank you for telling your story and yeah. freeing me to be able to, to, to live my to be able to, to tell mine or live mine. So remember when you when you're doing that speaking that you when you when you when you were talking about not having to to talk about it, mm-hmm. yeah, your words your your words are free to other people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know they, they, yeah. they really are so I, I love that I love that I love that um so what's next for you what's, what's okay. next for you Ms. Kittredge what you got going so, you got anything going on <laughs> I mean I need to slow down a little bit but nothing nothing <laughs> nothing major you know I still um I do I do small art events but that's something okay. that I do at least once a month where I go and um do face painting with the kids and um sell some of my art um, as far as writing goes, I'm working on a children's book. My mac and cheese was made with love. Um, and it's going to have, it's going to be very interactive. Let's just say that because being a preschool okay. teacher, I notice and I pay attention very, very, very much so to what a child needs because they are each different. And it's like my profession has really helped me understand and deal with adults, if that makes any sense, because I can see in a child the different developmental issues, whether it be at home or academically, and what the result can be in an adult. I can look at an adult and tell what happened as a child, if that makes any sense. Cause I'm like, I'm really, really into my work. I love what I do. It is my okay. purpose and mm-hmm. um, definitely God given. So my mac and cheese was made with love. It's gonna have um, numbers, pictures, colors, but it's also gonna be interactive as far as insects, bugs, it's gonna have everything in it that a child would need. So if they don't like bugs, they're gonna like the colors. If they don't like the colors, they're gonna like the numbers. If they don't like the numbers, they're gonna like the letters. There's gonna be something for every child in the book along with mac and cheese. And I'm gonna put a recipe in the end of the book too. Um, and I wanted to do a seminar this October. I have faith that it can happen, but I don't wanna put the pressure on myself for it to happen based on how big I want it to be and how imperative Mm -hmm. it is for it to reach the massive amount of people that I want it to reach. Um, But it was supposed to be a book. God told me to make it a seminar. There needs to be people Mm -hmm. on a panel speaking to each other and then put it in a book. Um, Mm -hmm. It's called How to Effectively Communicate with Children. And this actually came to me, I was at a donor's dinner for my, job at the shelter and my coworker's husband said if you could teach anything to the people in this room what would it be and I was like what I don't know like what do you mean it's a lot of people in here what would I, I don't know so I was like come back to me so he went around to everybody one lady said she would like make some jewelry because that's what she did she made like jewelry out of forks and spoons it was awesome so everybody shared their story and I still didn't have an answer and I looked at him and I was like you know what I would teach? I would teach how to communicate with children. I said, I would teach how to effectively communicate with children because mm. they 
need to be spoken to in many different ways. And if we learn how to speak to them in every kind of way, I think that we'll, you know, have a much better world on our hands. Um, Cause sometimes I look at children and I say, oh Lord, I hope you're not my doctor when we get older. I got faith in you, but I hope you ain't my doctor when we get older because what you doing right now, I love my kids though. But um, I'm talking about the kids at my job, but I love all children. Like I know that's another one of my, um, my given gifts as far as being able to connect with children. I can effectively communicate with children. That's only because I've made it, and I've made it like my number one goal in my profession to learn everything and pay attention to all of the specifics and details with all of the classes and all of the training and all of the extra stuff that they offer us because you just never know. And that's with special needs, that's with infants, that's with teenagers, I can do it all. Um, but if we are taught as a whole or share our different ways and how we communicate as a whole, we can collaborate something to make it more effective. Like don't yell at the child if they're having a fit, they're yelling for a reason. Um, but how many people know that? Many people may know that, but not enough people know that. There are so many different ways, so many different ways to communicate with children, but they need to be effective. There's yeah. no point in talking if it's not going anywhere. There's no point in telling if it's not being listened to. So we need to figure out a way aside from these devices to um, effectively communicate with them. Because at this point, they listen to the phone and the computer more than they listen to us, even my kids. My kids were brought up to books all over the house. You don't know the answer, go look in a book. We got a book on everything. Go look in the book. Go get the dictionary. <laughs> yes, the dictionary. The only thing I'm disappointed is us not having encyclopedias, but it's like, go get the dictionary. So they were taught to look things up and research things. And even if they're told something, double check. Go look yep. and see if it's in a book. Um, and now you have your phone. Google it. And don't just Google it. See if it's in a book too. Like there's so many different points of access where you can learn something. Um, and even my kids, it, it gets to the point where they're older, they're teenagers. And it's like, Dad, you were right about this. You know, such and such posted about this. I'd be like, I should knock your side your head. I told you this years ago. You gonna listen to somebody on on uh, social media? I said, but that's all right. I'm glad you get it now. You you you. I'm glad you get it. You okay? You know, um, that that used to be disappointing to me, but you know, it's the time and age we live in. But even so, we need to learn how to connect with them verbally and emotionally, so that they're not so gone. They're gone. Sometimes I'm like, come back. Where you at? You know, what's going on? You okay? You all right? You want to talk about it? Because I just can't tell all the time where they're at. And it's just the kids at my job too, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think if we come together in this seminar next October um, and have different people on the panel, and I'm talking about doctors communicating with children. I'm talking about teachers, pastors, parents. I'm talking about siblings, all different people from every everywhere, from tap in from everywhere. And let's mm -hmm. share these ideas and let's eat some food and let's have a good time and let's post it. And then let's write this book on it. And then let's get some successful uh, results from it, you know, so that we don't have so many, so many, so many bad things. I'm not gonna say bad things, so many things that aren't as good happening in the world, you know, because even the bad things turn out to have something good come out of them. Now, that's what I call making it better for mm -hmm. the next generation. And I always say that it's every generation's responsibility to make it better for the next generation. It is. It is. And, and that makes the next generation better because not only are you communicating, because I read this book by John Maxwell last year, one of the best books I've ever read because everyone communicates, but not everyone connects. Yes. And, and in the book, he talks about connecting with people. How do you connect with people? Because we can communicate, Mm -hmm. You know, we can talk all day with people, but are you connecting with people? And 75% of the time, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, especially when it comes to the younger generation, the, the next generation and the, and the generation after them, connecting with them so that they can understand the, the, the journey that they're on. Because mm -hmm. they're going to be, like you say, they, they're going to be the one that, <laughs> they're going to be your doctors. They're going to be, mm -hmm. be your, you know, And I remember you. names. I remember <laughs> names. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so so no, we, 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 we would want to be connecting with them now. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's really that. important. It's, it's really important because they're so impressionable and they yeah. become, they're becoming more impressionable younger, you know. I'm looking at infants and babies that aren't even a year old. And I'm just like, yeah, I see. 
I see. Okay. As far as there's a certain way that you're going to have to connect with this child when it gets into the next class. And then there's going to be a certain way that you have to communicate with this child when it gets into this class, because even at that age, you can see where there's things that you need to direct a certain way, you know, yeah. if, if you, if you care that much to pay attention. Yeah. So, so last thing before we go, I want you to share how can how can people contact you and connect with you in order to be able to have you come speak, in order to be able to do book signings, or or if they want to use your book and book club, how can how can they uh, contact you? Um, they can contact me by email or by phone. Um, my book is available on Amazon. I would prefer that you get it for me directly. Uh, my phone number. I'll actually put my phone number in the chat. But okay. I'll also, um, it's in the back of the book, and I'll also okay. give it to you. Um, it's okay to say it on here, right? Yeah, why not? I don't mind. Okay, so my phone number is 470-778-7978, and my e email is spokeninsight360 at gmail.com, and that's the word spoken, insight, the word insight, I-N-S-I-G-H-T, the number three, the number six, the number zero at gmail.com. I'm going to put it in the chat though. Okay, cool. Now, do you have a, um, uh, uh, do you want them to, to, can they, can they visit like a Facebook page or Instagram page or? Yes, um, my Instagram is Spoken Insight 360 as well. My Facebook page is Catrice Nicole Simpson Diggs. Come on down. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Catrice, this has been absolutely phenomenal. See, this is why I tell you why I love so much doing the Author Showcase, because I get to have conversations like this, um, to be able to um, get insights, get, get um, talk with my fellow poets, as I've done with several others, and I absolutely love that, uh, love, love that, but other authors who are impacting who are enlightening, who are empowering, and who are impacting um, the community as a whole, the community um, uh, uh, in, in, in a world sense. That's why we do the Author Showcase. And I know y'all can't see this on here in the National Black Unity News. This is the current issue. And I know y'all probably can't see the full thing, but the current issue of the Author Showcase, which um, yours truly, she is, she is, uh, Top top center, <laughs> top center in the, in the newspaper. In the newspaper, um, so you want to go? You can go to www.tnbun.com. Get your subscription. You can actually also visit our YouTube channel, um, the National Black Unity News um, YouTube channel. If you put that in, you'll see all of the other uh, showcase conversations that we've had. In addition to hers, will be up uh, in, in a little bit as well. But you'll be able to see all of the other conversations that we had. And you can actually get the newspaper delivered right to your door um, just uh, with, your, with your subscription. It's uh, a quarterly newspaper. So you get four newspaper, physical newspapers, because in addition to the author showcase, there's so many other stories that are part of the uh, that are part of the newspaper. I promise you, you will be you, you'll have so much to read and get informed uh, from from the the other stories that are in here, because these are stories that you aren't going to readily hear about um, in this newspaper. I promise you, it, it is well worth the, and you can get it for, I believe the subscription is under just under $20. So for, for, for the issue. So it, it will be well worth it. I think that that you will enjoy it. You'll get to, to um, see other authors that are showcased in the newspaper, uh, such as Catrice, and there, there are others that are in here as well too. Catrice, before we go, there's even one that's in here. She is 11 now, she was 10 when she wrote her book called Grandma's Nuggets. I love to tell her, story. phenomenal young lady, yeah. phenomenal young lady, but she wrote um, the, the, the um, knowledge and, and the nuggets that her grandmother gave her before she passed away. She, wrote, she put it into a book, the, those experiences that she had with her grandmother and, and just the, the knowledge that her grandmother shared with her. And I thought that was phenomenal. But to be 10 
11 years old and, and to do that. And she was actually referred through, actually through Tammy as well. So I would thank Tammy for that as well. She was a part of, um, she's a part of the showcase as well too. So it's great people like you <coughs> that are part of the showcase that make the showcase what it is. So you all can go check that out. Any parting word that you want to leave us with Miss Miss Catrice before we go? Um... Just to, just to thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for your time, Dr. McKenzie. Um, to all of you guys, just always do your best. Be your best self and um, don't let nothing stop you. Yourself at best is the best self to be. And as long as you're doing that, then you're good. You know, make it happen. Love your life and live it up. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to I want to thank out Patrice. I want to thank out in in studio, in Zoom studio audience <laughs> that has joined us today. Absolutely. Um, love, love, love and appreciate you all for for showing up tonight. Um, appreciate you all, Tammy and everyone else that, that is a part of this. I can't see the names because of the light on, on, on my eyes. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> But I appreciate everybody for tuning in. This has been another episode of the Authors Showcase, y'all, brought to you by the National uh, Black Community News newspaper, J and JNF Enterprises. Uh, and we appreciate um, you all being a part, coming in, just, just hearing these conversations. And hopefully, uh, like I always say, these conversations make you uh, 1% better today than you were yesterday. But at the end of the day, if my mission, my purpose is to make you better by the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year. And part of that, part of how I do that is having these conversations with these great authors that that do so much, that have put in uh, put into words um, some great stories and some great knowledge, information, and resources that we can use um, from now until forever. And ever. So we appreciate y'all. We'll talk to y'all. We'll talk to y'all next time. Have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll talk to y'all soon. Thank you guys. Good night. <laughs>